praise the Lord. Dearly beloved sisters and brothers, Father has come once again greeting you all in the name of Jesus. We are on 171st day of Bible pilgrimage. Reflections are on 1st Chronicles chapters 3 and 4, Psalm number 129 and Ephesians chapter 3. In chapter 3 of 1st uh, Chronicles, we read about the unbroken line of succession of David and his descendants. From the beginning of his reign as king in Judah to the Babylonian exile and beyond. For hundreds of years, the Davidic dynasty maintained its position on the throne of Judah with remarkable longevity. So in this chapter 3, in the genealogy, we read about almost all the kings of Judah. Maybe only exception that the wicked queen Athalia is not mentioned. In spite of all the foolishness and wickedness of many of the successes of David, the unbroken succession of Davidic dynasty continued only because God was keeping his promises to David. Whereas what happened in the nation of Israel, you know, the northern kingdom, we know it. They had several dynasties coming and going. But in Judah, things were different. Hallelujah. We often think that our choices determine our destinies. But there is something else to it. That is, see, just as the blessings David and his family experienced were the results of God's kept promises. The same way, the blessings we experience and the legacies we leave behind might be the results of God's choices and actions. Why? See, when uh, you know, when we follow the Lord uh, more closely, doing His will, obeying all the time, then God brings us greater blessings. But even when we are in sin, very often we fail to obey. We fail to take the right decisions. In spite of all that, you know, in spite of we being living in sin, we walking away from the Lord, often the Lord is still working in our lives to keep the promises He made to those who came before us or who went ahead of us. Can you understand this? Some of our forefathers might be, you know, very righteous like David, even more than that. And in their prayer, they had asked for the blessings for their generations. And God might have promised them. And the Lord keeps His promises. That's why we, many of us, are receiving constantly the mercy of God in spite of all our sinfulness. I hope you understand. Hallelujah. So, uh, blessings can flow in the generations because of one righteous person in between. Hallelujah. So, as God worked through both the faithful and unfaithful descendants of uh, David to prepare the way for Christ's first coming, He works through all of us today to prepare the way of His second coming also. Hallelujah. So, later only we will understand, you know, we are all used by the Lord. We are all in the plan of God. So, God might be using all of us in His own way, according to His own plan. Even He is using our sinfulness, shortcomings and to bringing something greater out of that. That is why when we read the genealogy of uh, uh, David, we understand, you know, how the Lord has used even the sinful people with all their shortcomings and weaknesses. Praise the Lord. No one can defeat the plan of God. Hallelujah. It all depends not on man's will and exertion. It all depends on God's mercy. Praise the Lord.
Chapter 4 has a further genealogy of the tribe of Judah, the most numerous and most famous of all tribes. Also uh, an account of Simeon in this chapter. Since the focus of all these genealogies is the dynastic line of David, it makes sense that the tribe of Judah is listed first. Hallelujah. The genealogies surely really make us, you know, bored very often because very dry. One after another, so many names and very often doesn't make any sense, we think. So we have the, most of us would have the temptation to skip and to go. I used to have it. Hallelujah. But uh, while uh, going through uh, one commentary, I just uh, came across one statement of Adam Clark. In fact, though he was a Methodist theologian, but I liked how he said about these genealogies. I caught. So he said, How barren to us is this registered, barren both of incident and interest. And yet, as barren rocks and sandy deserts make integral and necessary parts of the globe, so do these genealogical tables make necessary parts of the history of providence and grace in the maintenance of truth and the establishment of the Church of Christ. Therefore, no one that fears God will either despise or lightly esteem them. Hallelujah. So that's what he said about genealogies. Right. Praise the Lord. Uh, and in this chapter, the most remarkable person is Jabez. And we are not told upon what account Jabez was more honorable than his brother. But we find that he was a praying person, was a prayerful man. The way to be truly great is to seek to do the will of God and to pray constantly. So we have a prayer, chapter 4. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10, Jabba's prayer. Very anointing prayer it is. A beautiful prayer. It is wonderful to claim this prayer, okay? Four things he asked. He prayed four things to the Lord. First, Jabba's prayed that God would bless him indeed. God would bless him indeed. You know, spiritual blessings are the best blessings. God's blessings are real things and produce real effects and without his blessings you know we have been seeing in the word of God in the scripture several times you know without his blessing all our hard works make no sense and no meaning like these days we have been seeing from the Psalms very clearly without blessings everything is in vain hallelujah so the second prayer, the second thing he asked that he would enlarge his territory, that God would enlarge his territory. So that God would, you know, meaning is that God would enlarge our hearts. And so enlarge our portion in himself and, to, and to his portion in us. Our portion in him and his portion in us in us more more of the lord in us also you know uh, territory enlarged has another meaning that uh, we have spiritual authority over more people more place that we become instrument of blessing and salvation for others enlarge my territory meaning you know may i have more authority spiritual authority over more people so that I can save many people in Jesus. Praise the Lord. The third prayer, uh, the third thing he asked is that God's hand might be with him. Hallelujah. God's hand with us to lead us, to, to protect us, to strengthen us and to work with us 
to work all our work in us and for us you know that is the hand of god in us you know he will work in us let the lord work through us that is the meaning may your hand be on me hallelujah and the fourth thing he prayed is that god would keep him from harm evil the evil of sin evil of trouble and uh, the evil designs of the enemy that they might not hurt him hallelujah he says that i be protected from harm that it might not hurt me meaning uh, it might not make him a jabas indeed you know what is the meaning of jabas his mother gave birth in pain she had a lot of trouble when she was delivering this son so she gave this man name jabas saying because i bore him in pain so meaning of jabas is connected with pain sorrow so he is praying that i should not be a man jabas indeed meaning a man of sorrow and god heard his prayer god answered his prayer the lord is always willing to answer our prayer his his ears are always open towards our prayer so the importance of uh, being prayerful and that's why among so many numerous names one is projected here he about jabes jabes was more honorable than his brothers his brother because he prayed to the lord so please claim jabes prayer chapter 4 our uh, first chronicles chapter 4 words 10 four things he prayed that god would bless him indeed that god would enlarge his territory that his hand god's uh, you know hand might be uh, with him and uh, that he would keep him from harm and evil beautiful prayer praise the lord psalm 129 this psalm is another in the series of 15 titled a song of ascents as the pilgrims come to jerusalem to remember god's many past deliverances and to thank god for all these years of protection they prayed confidently for god's continued protection and the defeat of their many enemies that's what we find in this psalm ever since i was young you know israel say my enemies have persecuted me cruelly but they have not overcome me we can easily say that chief accomplishment of a jewish people the people of god has been their survival hallelujah the jews we can say they should be the largest enduring uh, a distinct ethnic people on the planet because they have been slanted hated persecuted and uh, you know expelled pursued murdered throughout their long existence but they have survived intact they endured hallelujah so the same is with the church of christ because now when we say it's about israel and jerusalem it's about the church too from the beginning till today the church has been persecuted but it survives it endures while the church existed from generation to generation the kingdoms and empires that have persecuted her fade and wither away themselves hallelujah also uh we read in verse 3 they cut deep wounds in my back and made it like a plowed field it's about jesus too hallelujah so it has different shades of meaning is jewish people church christ and also it's about specifically about each one of us every believer 
we have to go through these sufferings but the struggles the difficulties cannot overpower us we will endure so the graphic image of the grass on house tops that's what we read let them be like the grass on the house tops which withers before it grows up so you know that vividly describes the short lived success and uh, rapid extinction of uh, the plot against the church and also the plotters the attack and also the attackers they will appear for some time and then they will vanish hallelujah and specifically against each one of us every believer so we should trust in these promises of god that problems will come but they will disappear they will be like a grass on the house tops which withers before it grows up hallelujah so we should not be afraid of sufferings remember people of god always had enemies sufferings but they survived church suffered so much we have thousands of martyrs the church exists even today stronger than ever and so we should not be afraid of any suffering that is the main meaning and that is what the blessing this uh, psalm brings to us psalm 129 praise the lord coming to the third chapter of st paul's letter to ephesians we had seen the first three chapters of ephesians are doctrinal and the last three chapters are practical and this chapter 3 is bringing that uh, transition from doctrines to the practical aspects so in the first part verses 1 to 13 of chapter 3 St Paul is speaking about the mystery of Christ revealed. So he says that this gospel is revealed to him as he had previously mentioned. So he is convinced about this. There is no doubt. So he he says what is that verse 6 that is how the gentiles are fellow heirs members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So he is very clear about this fact. salvation is not only to the gen uh, to the jews uh, uh, but also to the gentiles jews had laws the mosaic laws so salvation is not obedience to the laws alone but the salvation is by through grace by faith in jesus so he is convinced about that So in the second part of this chapter verses 14 to 21 it includes a personal prayer by St Paul a beautiful prayer like uh, we had seen the Jabez prayer this is Paul's beautiful prayer he is kneeling down in prayer asking mainly three blessings the first thing he is asking god to give the ephesians inner strength through his spirit inner strength through the spirit of god that they be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man hallelujah second thing that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith hallelujah through faith Christ may dwell in you. So, the presence of Jesus Christ you receive through your faith. He is proclaiming in his prayer. And the third thing he is praying is a desire that these people, the Ephesians, to know, they should know the depth of Christ's love that surpassed all knowledge. It's a beautiful prayer that you may come to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God so three beautiful things he is asking hallelujah now he is concluding this chapter with a doxology to the lord in fact that is the conclusion to the first part of uh, 
uh, his epistle, three chapters. Now from fourth chapter, it's beginning with the practical teaching. Praise the Lord. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.